Your lecture is about cardiovascular system. I will teach you the concept and you will study from the, your book the detailed explanation. What is cardiovascular system? If you notice that cardiovascular system composed of vascular and cardiac. Okay? So cardiovascular system is divided either to vascular or cardiac. So when we talk about vascular, we are talking about peripheral flow. Okay, I am writing it, peripheral flow. Still we will not touch this. We want to focus this to cardiac part of the cardiovascular system. So when I am saying cardiac, I am talking about muscle, right? So I am talking about muscle. So when I am talking about muscle, I am talking about performance of this muscle. How I will know the performance of cardiac muscle? So performance of cardiac muscle will be known by electrical activity in that muscle, electrical activity and also output of that muscle. So I am writing cardiac output. Okay. We talk about electrical activity. So when we talk about electrical activity, I want to you think about it that how my cardiac muscle will work in the cellular level. Okay, let's write it here. Let's we make electrical activity in the ventricle. Because we know that from our anatomy that cardiac muscle is composed of atrium and ventricle. First we want to talk about ventricular electrical activity or electrical activity in the ventricle. Okay, now I want to talk about ventricular electrical activity. In the ventricle, in order to this electrical activity to occur, I need movement. Movement of ions is very important. Okay, so what I need to my ventricle, generate action potential, generate electrical activity, what I need, I need movement of ions. So I am writing here, movement of ions. Okay, so I need movement of ions, right? Can you think about it, which ion supposed to move? There is three important ions that we should not forget. Those are, which one? Sodium, potassium, and calcium. So, I need these three ions to move in order to generate action potential in my ventricle. How these ions will move? In order these ions to move, I need to have a channel, right? So let me write it here. The first is movement of ion. The another part is I need to have channels. What are those channels? I just make it a big picture about it. The channels can be voltage channels, voltage gated channels. Let me write here gated. And channels can be ungated. So the channels can be voltage gated or can be ungated. If I am talking about voltage gated channel, voltage gated channel is itself divided to two. One is fast. Another one is slow. The important here is we understand that 
which ion will pass through from fast channel and which ion or ions are passed through from slow channel. So from fast channel which ion will move? It's sodium. From slow channel which ion will move? Is potassium and calcium. Okay. How about ungated? What do I mean by ungated? Ungated means that there is a hole. So it's always open. If I am talking about hole, what does it mean? It's the sun there, it's always open. Okay? So from this channel, which is always open, who will go out? Which ion will go out? Very good. Potassium. So potassium always will be efflux will go out from that hole, from that ungated channel. Let me draw the ventricular action potential. It's something like this. This is the ventricular action potential. Okay. This ventricular action potential has four phases. Let me explain to you what does it mean. So the first phase is phase zero, phase one. Let me let me yeah, it's much better. Phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. Each one of the phase different electrical activity will act. Again, let me go back to our concept. The movements of ion is very important to generate action potential, correct? Keep it in your mind that there is three important ion that will play an important role in this action potential. Okay. In phase zero, over starting of the action potential or over starting of resting membrane potential, as you see, is a negative 90. So, in the generation of action potential, will happen in negative 70. So, from negative 70, we are going to positive, right? So, it will be something like positive, let's say 50. So, what will happen? What I am talking about? I am talking about inside the cell. So class, inside the cell will be positive. How inside the cell will be positive? When positively charged ion go inside the cell, such as sodium. So in phase zero, what happens is sodium will influx. Please don't forget, influx to the cell. So sodium is positively charged ion, influx to the cell. What will happen? Cell rapidly will be depolarized. So phase zero, I am writing here the phases. So phase zero, which is sodium influx, will cause cell to become depolarize correct let's see what is phase one if you see it here let me see, stand here if you see the phase one okay in the phase one the cell become repolarizing right the phase one is not anymore goes up going down so in phase one what happened in phase one Sodium channel inactivated, okay, inactivated, in meaning it's not anymore activated, inactivated, and potassium which has a hole here will go out. So potassium will influ efflux, as I said always, potassium will efflux from ungated. Okay. 
Look at this. When there is no more sodium goes to the cell, correct? And when there is potassium, which is also positively charged, goes out of the cell, so from positive we are decreasing. That's why I am seeing the phase one. I am calling phase one. Let me write it here because there is no space there. Phase one is initial repolarization. It's initial. It's a start of repolarization. Okay. What happened in the phase two? Phase two is known as plateau phase. What does it mean? As I am seeing in the, what I draw here in the phase two, I am seeing the straight line. It's not goes down or up. So what happened in phase two is, in the cellular level, in the phase two, two ions will influx and efflux at the same time. In the phase two, the ion will influx to the cell is calcium. So calcium will be in flux. And the ion will be efflux from the cell is which ion? Very good, potassium. So influx of calcium and efflux of potassium for 200 milliseconds will cause plateau phase. Very good. Let's go to phase 3. As you see the phase 3, the cell becomes repolarizing. Correct? The phase 3 cell will become repolarizing. What does it mean? Meaning to say, calcium channel close, only positively ion channel will be open is potassium. So potassium will be efflux from the cell. So in the phase 3, which ion will be efflux? Potassium. And it has sense for me already. Because potassium is positively charged. When it's go out of the cell and there is no more positive calcium to go in, so cell will become more negative. Positive leaving the cell. Okay. Many students asking about phase 4. How cell will generate resting membrane potential? In order to be having good resting membrane potential, I mean generate the resting membrane potential, I need to have sodium potassium ATPs. That's very important to we have a phase four, which is resting membrane potential. So it will be balanced. And another theory here is that when inside the cell become too much negative. Right? When inside the cell become too much negative, the negatively charged cell will attract the positive inside. So it will make the balance. So it will understood, cell will know that I, I have a negative 90 already if it's my cardiac cell. So I need to have my resting membrane down. So negatively charged will attract the positive and also don't forget the important role of sodium, potassium, ATPs. Okay, so we are done here in ventricular action potential. I would like to talk about SA node action potential. So now we want to talk about FT node action potential. SA node class. SA node, when I am talking about SA node, I am talking about atria. Again, recall that my cardiac muscle composed of atrium and ventricle. So now we are talking about atrial action potential, which is known as SA node action potential. The same thing will happen also, the movements of ions, the same ion sodium, potassium and calcium. In the atrium or SA node action potential, something important you should always keep in your mind that sympathetic and parasympathetic or in general, the autonomic nervous system has 
how can I call this, autonomic nervous system can indirectly, indirectly stimulate as a note. Let me give you an example. When I have running from the stairs up, what will happen to my heart? My heartbeat will increase. Look what I am saying. Heartbeat will increase. Why? Because my sympathetic will activate my heart rate to be increased. So can I say that as a note, showing me the heart rate, correct? So SA node or atrial depolarization will show me my heart rate. Okay. Atrial depolarization, as I told you, also need to have ionic movement, which is 3 ion. But the phases are different. The phases in SA node action potential are different with ventricular action potential because it starts with phase Z4, phase zero and phase three. So the phases are here four, zero, three. What happened in the phase four? What happened in the phase zero? And what happened in the phase three? Look at the different class. In ventricular action potential, which I draw here, this is started. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, and phase 4. So if you notice, this is an SA node action potential. We do not have phase 1 and 2. Okay. What happened in the phase 4? Phase 4, two things might happen. One is opening up sodium funny channel or torrent or or opening up calcium channel so this is the two theory in different book so opening up sodium funny channel why funny this really goes slowly slowly inside or opening up the calcium because as you recall that I told you the calcium is slow. Is it slow moving inside the cell? Slowly. Okay. So phase four, if you remember, this line is known as threshold. So when this sodium valley current open and sodium go to the cell, it will make this to reach to threshold. When it's reached the threshold, the sodium funny channel will close. In phase zero, what channel will open? Calcium. So calcium channel will be open and calcium will influx to the cell. And in phase three, potassium channel will be open and potassium will be efflux from the cell. Always remember, potassium loves go out of the cell. So potassium always efflux. Okay. Some people say that potassium will be inside the cell. Yes, potassium will go inside the cell, but always want to go outside of the cell like there is a hole. Okay. So this is SA node action potential. On the other hand, there is ventricular action potential. So as I told you, is node action potential can be determined heart rate and ventricular action potential ventricular action potential can determine the stroke volume if you remember in the beginning of the lecture i told you that i need to know my performance of cardiac muscle the performance of cardiac muscle should be known by cardiac output. So how I will know my cardiac output? To know the cardiac output, I need to know stroke volume times heart rate. So as you see, stroke volume times heart rate. 
how much blood? Maybe you ask me. So what is stroke volume? Stroke volume is how much blood or amount of the blood will be ejected during each beat. Each heart beat. This is stroke volume. Output is in one minute. But stroke volume is the amount of the blood will be ejected in each heart beat. So stroke volume itself is dependent to three important factors. So stroke volume is dependent to three important factors. First important factor for stroke volume is preload. Second important is contractility. And the third important is afterload. Okay. So stroke volume dependent to preload, contractility and afterload. Preload meaning what does preload mean? Preload I always say to you, the load of the heart is what? Blood, right? The heart loaded by blood. So preload meaning how much blood will return to the heart. How blood will return to the heart? From venous. You recall the your anatomy. If I draw it here, let me make a space here to draw the... Okay, so if you recall your anatomy, we have superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. I, I am actually wrong. It's inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. So inferior vena cava and superior vena cava both will drain to the atrium correct both will drain to the atrium of the right side correct so inferior vena cava getting the venous return from the lower body like the gut the liver from the renal and superior vena cava will receive the blood from jugular vein down to superior vena cava to right atrium so both of the three to right atrium so this is the venous return this is what i want you to understand so if i write it here preload known as tension or load which is determined by venous return Okay, how I will know that how much blood go to my heart from end diastolic volume? What is end diastolic volume? The, let me describe this first. I mean, define this first. What's diastolic? Diastole meaning relaxation of the heart. When heart become relaxed, meaning it's feeling time. So the diastole is a feeling time of the heart. So the heart will be filled with the blood. Okay, that's why I am saying venous repair. The heart will be filled by the blood, which is returned by the venous system. Okay? So how I will know clinically to determine the end diastolic volume so from today, we will send the patient to the echocardiogram, right? When we send the patient to echocardiogram, we can see the patient in diastolic volume. I will explain this later in the clinical scenario. So we understand preload. So preload is a load or tension 
which is come from the venous return to the heart and if I have a good preload for sure I have a good muscle contraction so I have a good stroke volume what is contractility contractility is contraction of my cardiac myocyte that I would rather to explain this in the effect of the I will I will draw for you the contractility effect when it's come to cellular level how calcium will enter to the cardiac myocyte it will bind the troponin it will cause tropomyosin and troponin and myosin overlap each other will cause contraction what is afterload it's very important afterload is a resistant okay whenever you hear afterload remember resistant where is this resistant it's in aortic valve is it inside the valve not really the resistance is the arch of aorta or ascending aorta let, it, let, it, let me make it here i just wrote the left hand my left ventricle okay if it's my left ventricle this is my aortic valve so where is really after load after load is pressure here okay so after load is a pressure available here which is pushing blood downward while when my cardiac muscle want to contract, want to make the blood to eject, okay? So this is the pressure of after, notice again the ejection of the blood. What I should do? When the pressure reach to 80 and above 80, its valve is open and blood will eventually eject out. Okay, that's, I just want to explain you or emphasize you what is after load. Afterload will increase in the clinical scenario if patient we have an elderly patient with the calcification, calcification, not classification, not calcification, meaning the position of calcium in the valve. That's made afterload to increase. This is the one of the scenario when afterload will increase. Okay, because in that case when there is calcification, the valve is very hard time to open. So this is about stroke volume. Stroke volume, if I want to know what's the number of stroke volume in the mathematics, stroke volume is the n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume. So I just read it. Okay. So it's minus n systolic volume. Stroke volume is what? amount of the blood which will eject during each heartbeat what is end diastolic volume the physiology book saying to us end diastolic volume normally is 120 ml how about end systolic volume is 50 ml so stroke volume is 120 minus 50 so stroke volume is normally is 70 Correct? So this is how we will find the stroke volume. There is also important thing here in the, this mathematics we want to know is ejection fraction. What is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction is equal to the stroke volume divided to n diastolic volume. So stroke volume is 70 divided by 120 is something like 812-5260%. That's very important ejection fraction because I want to know how much blood will be ejecting. The fraction of that blood will be ejected is very important when I am diagnosing heart failure. Okay, so when I am diagnosing heart failure, will be useful to know the ejection fraction. I think we are almost done with concept 
and if you really read your book, you can understand it well. But if you combine it with this lecture, I just want to give you one clinical scenario, and I explain to how really contractility will happen, and we can end this session. So, if you have a patient, if you have a patient with going to your clinic, complaining of shortness of breath, your patient is complaining of shortness of breath. You are asking to more information from your patient. He is explaining more information, meaning you are asking the patient history of present illness. So the shortness of breath, let me teach you this also as early as this. The shortness of breath is a chief complaint, meaning the reason your patient go to your clinic is a chief complaint. The head of all the complaint is shortness of breath. Okay, what is the history of present illness of this patient? This patient is telling us that starting last month, one month prior to patient go to your clinic, he's experiencing that whenever he go from the stage to his clinic or to his workplace, he's experiencing shortness of breath. He must wait, he must stop, he must catch his breath, and then he continue his way, which is unlikely before. And also he is describing to you that whenever he is sleep, he is using two or three pillow. And also in the middle of the night, he's waking up and he seems like he's hungry for breath. He's catching breath. He's opening the window and he's catching the breath. So this patient, I can now diagnose this patient as a heart failure. Why? Because the job of heart is pump. Why? Why heart should pump? Because heart is pumping the blood to the all the system the whole body again question why i need blood to go to all my body because blood composed of oxygen where that oxygen came from from the lung that i am breathing so if this patient is telling me i have a shortness of breath meaning his hard time in delivering oxygen to his all over his body so his heart is failing. His heart is in failure. Okay, let me say you. If his heart is in failure, how I am going to treat it? That's I want to talk about one of the drugs that will be emphasized in Gaito, but it's not in the Bernian lady, is digitalis. Okay? I want to tell you effect of digitalis to treat the heart failure because digitalis you should remember is the last choice to give in to heart failure patient. But before we talk about digitalis, I am sure you want to know that how your cardiac muscle cell start to contract. Let's say that, let's say that this is the, my cardiac myocyte. In my cardiac myocyte, this is something like this. So what are we seeing? Here is the calcium. You just go to the cardiac myocyte. Go down to its concentration rate. I am seeing something we call it antiport, which is secondary active transport. What I am seeing here? Sodium goes in and calcium goes out. And I am also here seeing ATP, which is primary active transport, which will make a sodium out, if you want to be particular, three sodium out, and two potassium in. Okay? And also we are here seeing the sulfoplasmic reticulum, which is known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Sulfoplasmic reticulum is storage of calcium in the skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle cell. Okay. So calcium should be the sarcoplasmic reticulum because calcium is a dangerous to the cell. Because calcium is an enzyme activator. Remember that. So what 
happen in the physiology? The calcium goes in, the calcium of the sarcoplasmic reticulum also will go out. Actually, you should have knowledge about G proteins, how they form. Okay, to understand that how this calcium will go out of sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, this calcium of sarcoplasmic reticulum will go out. This calcium will go in, they will bind to troponin. They will cause conformational change to tropomyosin. And troponin, look at what I am calling it, troponin. Later on, we will talk about it. So, myosin and actin will overlap each other and will cause the muscle to become contract. But what happens when my heart is failed? This is the physiology, I hope you understand. Before we go to heart failure, I want to say to you, look at this calcium. After I make the contraction happen, this calcium will be pumped out to sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remaining calcium will be out through antiport, and the sodium which has come inside the cell will be out from cell because of presence of Sodium potassium ATPs. Some students are confused. So why calcium should go out and why sodium should go out also? Because as I said, calcium is the enzyme activator. It can be dangerous to the cell in the long run. And also sodium present in the cell. Sodium, if you put the sodium, it will attract the water. So what will happen if we have sodium in the cell and water will attract it? Cell will become swell. So when it's cell swelling, it will lose its function. That's what I don't want to happen. That's why I really need this active transport, primarily and secondary. Okay, let me tell you that you have a patient. Patient is chest pain. Patient is having, experiencing chest pain. What I am calling it in the medical term, angina, not angina, angina pectoris, okay? So I am calling it angina pectoris. It's what does it mean? Meaning chest pain. Do you think why my patient experiencing chest pain? What happened? The first thing come to your mind is oxygen. The oxygen supply decreased. To that part or that portion of the cardiac myocyte. Let's see, this is that portion of the cardiac myocyte. So when there is low oxygen, there is low blood flow. Do you agree? Okay. So there is ischemia, meaning reduce in blood flow. What compose in the blood? Hemoglobin which is, has oxygen. So when there is low blood, there is low oxygen. When there is low oxygen, let's see what will happen. I talk about oxygen, right? And the importance of oxygen in biochemistry, we learned that, that oxygen is a final electron transport. Okay? What happened? Oxygen is a final electron acceptor, which will generate ATP. Okay, if I am wrong, you can see my lecture, you can correct me. So, oxygen is a final electron acceptor. Where? In the mitochondria. What does it mean? Meaning, if I don't have oxygen, I cannot generate ATP. If I cannot generate ATP, I also cannot make Antiport. Why? Let's see. Let's see. This patient has ischemia. Ischemia is reduced blood flow. When I am reducing blood flow, I am decreasing oxygen. When I am decreasing oxygen, it will be decreased. Okay? The body always will try to compensate. The body will try to Compensate how? But they will use another way to generate ATP, but it's not really effective as when we have oxygen. What's the another way to generate ATP? Is 
Can you tell me? Anyone? Okay, so very good. Another way to generate ATP is the baby will not use oxygen. Okay. Okay, so I was saying to you that we will use anaerobic way, so we will not use any more oxygen. So from anaerobic way, we will produce ATP, but that ATP is not effective as when we have oxygen because it will accumulate lactic acid. Okay. When I accumulate lactic acid, what will happen? I will start to experience pain. So the pain is because of accumulation of lactic acid. Okay. So eventually, eventually this anaerobic way to produce ATP will also fail because of accumulation of lactic acid. But before that, let's say that when it's fail already, when I don't have ATP, what will happen? The sodium will cannot go out of the cell, so sodium will accumulate. The sodium will accumulate to the cell. When sodium accumulates to the cell, antiport will not work. Why? I told you, secondary active transport is dependent to primary active transport. Why? Because if there is no sodium available to the extracellular, the antiport will not work. Okay? So, so presence of sodium inside the cell will make this antiport also not work anymore. So when antiport not work, what will happen? Calcium will accumulate in the cell. What is calcium? Enzyme activator. What is sodium? Attracting water, so it will be swell. That's the time I am feeling pain. But if I don't rush into hospital, if I don't treat it, what will happen? It will calcium accumulate, will it make enzyme activator? When enzyme activator will cell membrane composed of phospholipid, calcium will produce enzyme phospholipids, will destroy the membrane. So, when it's destroyed the membrane, what will leak out? Troponin. Troponin will go to the blood. When troponin is inside the blood, what will happen? Meaning that my patient has myocardial infarction. Okay? So, when troponin in the blood, presence of troponin in the blood, will make me to think that patient has myocardial infarction. Why? Because the muscle is dead. Infarction meaning dead. That's why troponin, which is supposed to be inside the cardiac myocyte, now is leak out my blood. But if there is no troponin inside the blood and my patient has chest pain, meaning patient has ischemic heart disease, okay, so I should do treatment. Maybe patient has Blockage in the coronary artery. You know the two main coronary arteries, right coronary artery and left main coronary artery, right? They have a branches also. Alright? Okay, very good. And I must I want to tell you about effect of digitalis, which is very important in the board exam, but not really clinically useful at least as far as I saw. So digitalis effect. If I have heart failure, remember a while ago, I said that if my patient has heart failure, one of the way to treat me is digitalis. Okay. How digitalis or digoxin will affect in my cardiac myocyte? Digitalis effect is, digitalis will block the potassium side of potassium sodium ATPs. When digitalis block this potassium side, the same scenario happen. The sodium will accumulate, the calcium will be more, so more calcium available, we wish this calcium more be available to bind to troponin and will cause contraction by the way again. That's why digoxin can cause toxicity. Because if I injected digoxin without knowing the proper dose, it can make too much calcium in the cell and this calcium itself activate the enzyme and damage the cardiac myocyte. I hope this lecture finds you well 
and you understand your comment will help us to make better in the future. Thank you very much and have a good day.